Uh, so would you invite Keir to your pub, Keir Starmer, Prime Minister? No, he's, he, uh, he's banned. He's the, actually, he's the first person to be banned. He's actually on a board in the, in the hall. He's banned. Jeremy Clarkson's decision to bar Prime Minister Keir Starmer from his farm and pub stems from deep frustration over policies he claims have harmed British farmers. Clarkson argues that these policies have left farmers struggling to maintain their livelihoods, putting family-owned farms at risk of being lost after generations. This bold move is both a symbolic stand and a personal protest against what he sees as a lack of support for British agriculture. But we've got to, the farmers have got to keep this place supplied, and that's going to be the interesting story. I mean, I'll give you an example of just how difficult it is. So if I have a pig, and I butcher it, I slaughter it and butcher it, and turn it into a sausage. That sausage will cost here 74p. If I buy imported pig meat, make it into a sausage, it's 18p. Jeremy Clarkson's ban on Keir Starmer is rooted in frustrations over inheritance tax policies, which he and other critics argue are damaging to family-owned farms. But Clarkson isn't alone in his criticism. Public figures like Jeremy Kyle and Katie Hopkins have also condemned Starmer's leadership, highlighting issues such as immigration policies and cuts to essential services for the elderly. Together, they suggest Starmer is out of touch with the nation's needs. Has Keir Starmer lost sight of the real issues affecting everyday citizens? I mean, check this video out. Keir Starmer was so emotional speaking about farms. Every day seems to bring a new existential risk to British farming. Losing a farm is not like losing any other business. It can't come back. That's why the lack of urgency from the government, the lack of attention to detail, the lack of long-term planning, it's not on. You deserve better than that. In a bold move that has reverberated across the UK, Jeremy Clarkson announced that Prime Minister Keir Starmer is banned from his farm and pub, Diddley Squat Farm Shop. This decision isn't just a personal snub, it's a protest against policies Clarkson believes are damaging rural communities. Clarkson argues that Starmer's government is out of touch with the struggles of British farmers and the agricultural sector. By barring Starmer from his property, Clarkson aims to highlight the disconnect between the government and the real challenges faced by those in farming. As Clarkson himself puts it, this act is a way to voice his defiance against a government he feels is ignoring the needs of those who rely on the land for their livelihoods. If the government can't understand what we're facing, then they have no place here. Just fine. What's your message to the new government? Do you think they get the kind of rural economy at all? No, I don't think any of them have set foot outside Kentish Town for the last 35 years. No, no, they're a hopeless bunch. Um, so would you invite Keir to your pub, Keir Starmer, the Prime Minister? No, he's, he, uh, he's banned. He's, <laughs> actually, he's the first person to be banned. He's actually on a board in the, in the hall. He's banned. Why? Um, what have you got against him? Uh, Hello? <laughs> I thought you were running a news operation. <laughs> a major point of contention for Clarkson is the inheritance tax, which he argues is decimating small-scale farmers. Under this policy, when a farmer dies, their heirs must pay a hefty sum based on the value of the property, a financial burden that many can't bear. For many family-run farms, this tax is crippling, often forcing them to sell their land or, in some cases, lose it entirely. Clarkson has repeatedly stated that this policy is wiping out farms that have been passed down through generations, threatening the tradition of family-owned farms. He sees it as pushing the agricultural sector toward corporate control, where big businesses can afford to shoulder such burdens. Clarkson's concern is that many farmers are unable to pass on their farms to the next generation, endangering the survival of family farms and weakening rural communities. He believes that this policy is not just a financial issue, but a direct threat to Britain's agricultural heritage and the future of local farming. Would you say you're running at a loss? Oh, 100%. I don't take a wage. My name's Eddie Sermon, and I'm a farmer from Leicester, and I'm a beef and arable farmer. You spend all your time, all your days, working, 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 trying to make something of something, but then you're told how much it is worth at the end of the day. When someone said to me, can you do a cash, can you do all the workings out to see how much it costs you? I said, you can't do that. 
Clarkson's commitment to supporting British farmers goes beyond words. Over recent years, he has become a vocal advocate for the farming community, using his platform to highlight their challenges and challenge government policies he deems damaging. Through his show, Clarkson's Farm, he has gained first-hand experience of the difficulties farmers face, further fueling his resolve. In addition to speaking out, Clarkson has taken concrete steps to support struggling farmers, including providing direct financial assistance to those in need. His hands-on approach underscores his deep concern for the survival of rural communities and the future of farming in Britain. I'm not just talking about these issues, I'm doing what I can to help, he says, positioning himself as a vocal and dedicated ally of Britain's farming community. I would welcome anything that is sensible. This is not sensible. This needs a, a we need to, this needs to stop. We, it needs looking at, it needs reassessments. And I think there are other ways of doing this. I think what you are actually doing with this policy is going to penalize those family farms that are trying to build their business to deliver the growth that we've been told that we need to deliver for this country. To do all the things that we've just been talking about, your, your previous reports about the NHS actually needs. Uh, we need to look at food security. We've been told food security is national security. The, the world is looking in a very different place at the moment. Before his election, Keir Starmer made several promises to the agricultural community, vowing to protect farming, support local produce, and preserve Britain's rural heritage. However, once in office, Starmer allowed policies to pass that directly contradicted these pledges. One of the most contentious decisions came from Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves, who backed a version of the inheritance tax on farms. For many in the farming sector, this felt like a betrayal. As Clarkson and other critics argue, how can you promise to support farmers and then back policies that make it impossible for family farms to survive? This failure to follow through on promises has fueled perceptions of Starmer being out of touch with rural communities and the realities they face. In addition to this, talk show host Jeremy Kyle has criticized Starmer's stance on immigration, accusing him of failing to address the UK's growing homelessness crisis. Kyle argues that Starmer's immigration policies prioritize resources for incoming migrants, exacerbating the issue of homelessness among British citizens and deepening discontent with his leadership. Today, the Labour Party has shown its true colours, uh, and this is extraordinary. So Angela Rayner has announced that she's abandoning plans to give British people, in brackets, who have paid their stamp or taxes, close brackets, priority council housing. We're going to allow migrants to get that. And if you thought that wasn't bad enough, I'd love your response to this, because this sent me today quite literally over the edge. Um, if you're a and you wanted to get social housing, you were going to be banned under Labour's manifesto. That's been reversed as well today. So what we're saying then is, we're going to allow millions of people to come into this country and take away homes or whatever from British people who need them. And According to Kyle, the government's focus on providing housing, food and support for migrants has left many UK citizens without basic support. Homelessness remains a pressing issue, particularly affecting veterans and low-income individuals. Kyle is outspoken in his belief that Starmer's priorities are misplaced, asserting that while the government helps migrants, vulnerable British citizens are left to struggle. He calls this policy approach incompetent, claiming it reflects a fundamental disregard for the welfare of the UK's own citizens, particularly those facing homelessness and poverty. Bell. What about what about disused petrol stations? Well, there must be places that there can be houses, but then everybody comes back at me and says, well, then you've got to have infrastructure. And if you haven't got infrastructure, then you can't build houses. We, we seem to go round in cycles and we're not getting any. Katie Hopkins has joined the growing criticism of Prime Minister Keir Starmer's government, focusing particularly on the decision to cut the winter fuel allowance for the elderly. This allowance has long been a vital support for pensioners, helping them afford heating during the colder months. With the removal of this financial aid, many elderly citizens now face a harsh dilemma, whether to stay warm or cover other essential living costs. 
Hopkins condemns the cut, arguing that it is not only financially devastating but also life-threatening, given that older individuals are especially vulnerable to the health risks posed by cold weather. She asserts that this move highlights the government's disregard for the elderly and their needs, adding to her broader criticism of Starmer's policies. Hopkins believes this is yet another example of Starmer's out-of-touch approach, which she argues fails to protect the most vulnerable members of society. The elderly I speak to all the time who say, oh, I'm so glad I lived when I did. And I really hate part of that because I feel like saying, but you're still alive now. You're really important now. What you know is really important. You are the bedrock of this place. We still need you. You should be feeling the most valued, the most treasured. But the opposite is true. Old people now, wh wh where is their place? Apps mean they can't park their cars. Apps mean they can't go out. They're not served. They're not said good morning, good afternoon, thank you. I mean, it's an absolute madness. In America, at least, you still get mom and things like that for elderly. You still get sir said to older people in certain cities. And it's a tragedy that our old people feel that the gladness they take now is the gladness that their time is nearly up so they don't have to watch much more of this. And that is a really, really sad indictment, but also a truth that's not being told. You don't hear that anywhere. Jeremy Clarkson, Jeremy Kyle, and Katie Hopkins, despite coming from different backgrounds, have united in their criticism of Keir Starmer's policies. Clarkson's opposition to the inheritance tax on farmers, Kyle's concerns over immigration policies favoring migrants over citizens, and Hopkins' outrage over cuts to pensioner benefits all highlight a shared belief that Starmer's government is out of touch with the needs of the British public. Their combined criticism has resonated strongly with communities such as farmers, veterans, and the elderly, who feel increasingly neglected. Clarkson, Kyle, and Hopkins are using their platforms to raise awareness, urging the government to reconsider its priorities and address the concerns of these vulnerable groups. You describe yourself as working class. Sakia, define working class. No, working class is um, families that um, you know, work for their living, earn their money through um, going out to work every day, not do, through other not middle means. classes do that? Well, working class um, families have the ordinary hope to get on in life. I mean, this has been Don't a story of have that yep. as well? Clarkson's commitment to supporting farmers goes beyond just vocal criticism. He has pledged to actively fight for policies that protect family farms, offering both advocacy and direct financial aid to struggling farmers. His dedication has earned him the respect of many within the farming community, who see him as a rare celebrity willing to stand up for their interests. Clarkson firmly believes that the survival of family-owned farms is critical to preserving Britain's agricultural heritage and rural communities. He has made it clear that he will continue to use his platform to push for meaningful change and support farmers in their battle against harmful policies. The criticisms against Keir Starmer's leadership raise a significant question. Is the Prime Minister truly out of touch with the needs of the people he's meant to serve? Jeremy Clarkson tweeted, farmers, I know that you have been shafted today. Kirsty Olsop tweeted, Rachel Reeves has effed all farmers. For Clarkson, Kyle and Hopkins, the message is clear. Keir Starmer's policies are failing to meet the needs of ordinary Britons. Whether it's farmers on the brink of losing their land, elderly citizens struggling without winter fuel allowances, or homeless individuals left without shelter, their collective criticism underscores the disconnect between the government and the people it is supposed to serve. Clarkson's ban on Starmer is more than just symbolic. It's a call to action for a government that listens to and prioritizes the concerns of its citizens. The question now is whether Starmer will heed these warnings or continue to face growing opposition. Only time will reveal if this high-profile clash leads to a shift in British leadership and policy. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe. More videos from us are on screen now.